I'll be photographing Portlow in today's landscape photography video. Portlow is a beautiful little fishing village and we've got the beautiful sea all the way around it. We've got some lovely cliffs. So Portlow really is a beautiful place for landscape photography. So I got here before sunrise and the sun will be rising over that side. So it's directly on the other side of Portlow. So behind you there, the sun is rising with this very thick cloud, but there are a few patches of blue. So what I'm hoping for is, is either to get a bit of the pink hitting these clouds in the background um, before the sun rises, but as that's already happened, I've, <laughs> I'm very much uh, doubt that's gonna happen now, but there are some patches of blue. So if the sun rises in those patches, we might get some beautiful morning light hitting these houses. Um, so that should make a really nice panorama. The sky behind me now is looking amazing. Um, there's some beautiful pinks and blues and things kicking up there. That will be the perfect backdrop for this photo. Um, there are some really nice clouds and very subtly, there's some pink creeping into these clouds up here. So I'm going to try and come back a little bit further with the, with the framing and if you can see up there there's some the clouds stop if i go too low it's all gray so i want to try and pull back a little bit take a bit more of a wide angle lens um, and just try and capture some of that color in the clouds because i think that'll really look look beautiful we've got the southwest um, coast path which goes all along goes through portlow and it comes back up and behind you and goes all the way along there onto the headlands over there. Um, while we've been down here, we've done a few patches of the, the Southwest path and it's really stunning. It's a lovely walk. So if you're ever in this area, I definitely recommend that. So I'm still waiting for the light to, to appear on um, Port Lowe behind you, but the sky at the moment, the clouds over there are amazing. There's some really beautiful clouds and you can just about see the sun over there in the distance and there's some pretty impressive clouds up there as well so in the east it's looking amazing um not so much in the west but uh that's where everything's happening at the moment um but i can see there are a few breaks in the cloud it's not not a great deal i think there's there's clouds that goes all the way up but they're quite thin so i think soon um, within the next 10, 20 minutes, I think. Um, we should start getting the, the sun popping through and give a little bit of light, but I think it's gonna be a diffused, subtle light. But that sun is giving a little bit of detail right at the top there. Um, and this, this cloud that was behind Port Lowe's is slowly breaking up and we're getting a few patches of color in there now. So within a few minutes, I think it might start looking quite nice so we can get some photos. Um, it is getting exciting, so uh, just waiting now to see see what happens with the light. I've just been waiting for the sun to come out. It's just behind a cloud at the moment. Um, it's starting to poke out, but it's very hazy over there, so it doesn't look like we're going to get much of one. So I'll give it a few minutes, and maybe we'll get a nice sunrise. Um, but what I really want is just for some light to kick off but it's not really going to happen until it gets right at the top there um, where we've got some clear blue sky but there's a couple of layers of cloud at the moment so it doesn't look like we're going to get sunrise just yet so i've just been waiting for the sun to come up so i thought you might share some fascinating facts about port Lowe with you from wikipedia port Lowe is a small fishing village in cornwall which is true um, and it's situated in the roseland peninsula which is also true. Um, yeah. And, oh, here's another one. Portlow lies within the Cornwall area of outstanding natural beauty. Um, almost a third of Cornwall has a, an area of outstanding natural beauty designation with the same status and protection as a national park. The Southwest Coast Path passes through the village, which I mentioned earlier. So, those are three lovely facts, or maybe a few more. So, 
We're just still waiting now for the sunlight to hit the village and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Um, but on a positive note, there's a curlew just flew past and it was really beautiful. It's one of my favorite little birds. The sun is at its strongest now. It's right behind us. It's not a thick cloud, but it's um, quite a hazy cloud. So it's, it's diffusing a lot of the light. So we're not really getting anything on Port Lowe. Um, the light is pretty flat at the moment. And behind it, there's just gray clouds. So it's, it's not looking as picturesque as I would have hoped. But there's still the opportunity for some photographs down the bottom. So I'm gonna pop down there now and see what I can get. But the forecast today was for no cloud at all, but um, unfortunately it's over in the distance, you've got some cloud and it does make a difference when you're doing landscape photography, but that's the nature of the game. Um, you can't always guarantee it. And sometimes you could be waiting weeks for the light um, or the right conditions. So it's been a beautiful morning anyway. So I'm gonna carry on and go down the bottom and see what we've got down there. On the walk down to the beach, I've just found this uh, lovely little seed heads from a navel wort. So I've just managed to get a quick photograph of that. All the leaves have died on it, but it's um, the seed heads are still there. And I think it makes a really nice little photograph. So I've taken a close up of that and that looks quite beautiful. So if you look out, there's photo opportunities everywhere. I'm now down in Portlo Harbour and there are two fishing vessels that operate out of here. And so I think these are the two behind me. So I've just taken a panorama, um, making the best opportunity of these um, being out of the water in the low tide. Um, if they weren't, they'll be moving around. So um, they're very static at the moment, even though sometimes when they're on the water, boats can look really nice when they're moving around. So you get a little bit of blur, but because it's quite dark, I think the, the exposure time will be too long. So there'll be too much movement. So while the tide's out, I've taken a little photograph. So a panorama all across there and the sky is very bright behind me. So I'm going to crop that out and then just have the, the rocks behind these lovely boats. I've just come between these two beautiful little fishing boats here and got a panorama from this boat all the way around this little harbour, including this boat here. Now the light is starting to look really good now. We're hitting some light across there in the background. So I'll be going back up the top again in a minute because the clouds in the background have just broken. So they're looking really nice as well. So we've got nice clouds at the back and hopefully the light should be hitting these buildings any minute now. But you can see the, the lovely colors of the, the sun reflecting off the windows. So this, the settings for this photograph is F11 um, and eighth of a second. I'm using a three stop neutral density filter um, to, or graduated to balance the sky with a foreground. And um, so that's given me a nice even exposure. And I've taken about probably eight to 10 photographs in that panorama and I'll stitch those together and that should look really nice. Now I've come up really close to this boat here so I don't know if it's gonna work in that panorama or not, but um, it's a lovely boat. So I think that might be coming, sticking out of the edge of the photo, but it might look really nice. Um, but if not, I can always crop it out and start from the actual um, the buildings here on the left. and the tide is coming in quite quickly as well. And I've just found out these um, shoes aren't waterproof. I have to start wearing work wellies more often. I'm back at the top of the, the hill now. Um, I'm still overlooking Portlow and the sun has just come up from behind the clouds in the background and it's lighting up this little village beautifully. The clouds at the background aren't uh, too beautiful yet but they are clearing so it's getting a lot nicer now so I'm going to wait a few minutes I've taken a photograph um, already just in case the clouds um, don't dissipate and the light goes but at the moment I think um, we're going to get quite a bit of light because there's not much cloud in the background so I'm just going to keep waiting until the light reaches its best and see if I can get some of these lovely clouds at the top because they are starting to look really nice now and the, and the gray bits that were there earlier have now gone or are slowly going. So I've taken a, another panorama from over on that little tiny little island over there. Um, Cause I think that's quite nice to include that. And it's a panorama going all the way over 
to these buildings over there. So it's going to be quite a long one, quite thin. Um, there's a lot of bushes down here for all this ivy, so I can't get too much further past that because it's just a drop. So I'm not going to get as much of that sea down the bottom as possible, but I'm getting the boats in and there is some of the harbour, so I think this will look a really nice photograph. So just need to wait for the light. While I'm waiting for the light, I'll just talk you through how I've set the camera up. I'm using a 24 to 70 mil lens, and at the moment I'm using it at 35 mil to give me right down the bottom and to crop off the top clouds there. And I'm going for a panorama of about 12 shots. And because I've got the tripod set as high as I can using this center column, um, that's to get over this ivy down here. Now, because I'm using the center column, that doesn't make it as stable as pushing this, this head right down to the bottom. So each time I've moved the, the camera around, I'll lock it all off and then just wait a couple of seconds to take the photograph. And then that way, all the vibration should dissipate, take the photograph and then pan around a little bit more, lock it all off and keep doing the same. It does take a little bit longer, but at least that way, um, we'll get a crisp photo all the way through because quite often I've taken photographs where I've rushed too quickly and one image in the middle of the panorama is blurred and it just ruins a whole photograph so it really is important to be quite careful doing that. So the settings I've got on this camera are f11 to give me depth of field from right down in the foreground to the back and because I'm focusing quite a long way away from the camera, I'm not too concerned about depth of field on this one. But F11 gives me a very good depth of field, which will be fine front to back. Um, and then that leaves me with an ISO 100, which I always use anyway, um, especially in good light, just to get the best possible quality because it's the lowest amount of noise. And that leaves me with 20th of a second for each shot. The best of the light is now gone. I've got some lovely photographs. So it's time now to go and get some breakfast. So I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Or if you haven't already, please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified the next time I upload a video. Thank you very much.